In this video, we're going to take a second look at a problem and a solution proposed by Katherine Kosak in one of her YouTube videos. In this video, we'll focus on using R to do the calculations that are involved. And as a side note, we'll look at using R Studio, building a markdown file, knitting that markdown file to build this document that summarizes what we're doing. So let's look at the problem. A car manufacturer wants to build a new engine. That engine has to meet some air pollution standards. Uh, the mean emission of all the engines of this type must uh, be less than 20 parts per million of carbon. So what the company does is is uh, build, manufacture 10 engines and collect the data in the about the uh, the parts per million of carbon and here's the data. Now someone has also identified a level of significance at the 5% uh, level of significance is where we're going to be testing. That is, uh, is an administrative uh, uh, an executive decision. It's not part of the mathematics. Somebody decides what the level of significance is. Now notice the problem itself doesn't say that this is a hypothesis test, but we recognize that it is because uh, we, we want to test to see if the average, if, if the, the mean of the uh, emissions of all the engines is less than 20 parts per million. So let's begin to propose the hypothesis test. Now this step is seldom part of the write-up of, of the solution to one of these problems, but I highly encourage you to do this in every hypothesis test. Draw a picture. You see we're talking about some particular random variable. In this case the random variable is the number of parts per million of carbon uh, produced by each one of the uh, the engines in the population. Now that random variable will have a distribution. Here I've drawn it so that it looks very much like a normal distribution. That may or may not be the case. Now return to the problem and look at the hypotheses that we're going to need to form. To satisfy the admission standards, then the mean of all of these, um, uh, of, of this random variable has got to be less than 20. Often, the al not often, but not always, the alternative hypothesis is the research hypothesis. That is, we want the mean to be less than, oops, less than 20. Now that may or may not be the truth. The other the other possibility is what's called the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis always has an equal sign in it. You see, the mean is either less than 20, it's greater than 20, or it's equal to 20. The alternative hypothesis is, say, is, is looking for the mean being less than 20. So the null hypothesis will be the possibility that mu is greater than or equal to 20. It's almost always just written as equal to. Now the distribution does have a mean. In the reasoning that we're going to use here, we're going to say, let's suppose that the null hypothesis is true. So we get to say that the mean is equal to 20. Then we'll do an experiment. If the results of that experiment is extremely unlikely given this beginning point, then we'll reject, then, then there'll be evidence suggesting that we reject the null hypothesis. Now this original distribution also has a standard deviation. We may or may not know that piece of information. So let's look at the experiment. We'll we're going to select a number of items from this distribution. Hopefully that selection is a representative sample. It uh, may be a random sample or some other means to try and argue that it's a representative sample. And it's going to have a certain number of elements in it. We'll call that N. We will then take the mean of that sample. 
We'll call that mean x bar, uh, which is the usual notation for the mean of a sample. And we want to think about, although we're only taking one of these samples of size n, we want to think about the possibility of taking every single possible sample of size n, calculating the mean, and then looking at the distribution of all those sample means. Now under certain circumstances, it's known that this distribution of sample means will be normally distributed. We'll talk about those details in a minute. The mean of this distribution of sample means will be equal to the mean of this original population. And the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means will be equal to the standard deviation of the original population divided by the square root of n as long as that n is less than 5% of the total uh, population of, of the original random variable. Uh, we'll worry about that issue in another, ver in another video. Of course, we can't see all of the x-bars. We only see the, the, the mean of our one sample. So that, that fits somewhere in this distribution. Now, if we're assuming that the null hypothesis is true, then this distribution of sample means will have a mean equal to, the, to what the null hypothesis is claiming. Okay, that's the argument that we're using here. Now, if we knew what the standard deviation was of this original distribution, then we could find the, sta the standard deviation over here, and we could find the probability of getting that score or something less than that score uh, to see if, if that's an unusual event to get this particular score under the circumstances that the null hypothesis is true. And so we could decide whether to reject the null hypothesis or discover that we don't have enough evidence to reject it. To be able to find that uh, probability, we're going to, we want to have this distribution to be a normal distribution. There are two conditions that, uh, a, either one of those conditions imply that this is, is going to be normally distributed. If n is sufficiently large, the the central limit theorem says that as n gets larger, that the distribution of these sample means will become closer and closer to a, a normal distribution. Uh, so if n is sufficiently large, this will be a normal distribution. Uh, usually if n is greater than 30, uh, most textbooks uh, say that that's sufficient to make this a normal distribution. Um, or if the original distribution of the random variable was normally distributed, then the distribution of these sample means will also be normally distributed. Now the problem is we don't know what the standard deviation of the original distribution is. So even if this is normally distributed, we've got a little bit of trouble here. So what, what happens is this. Usually, the best evidence that we have for what the standard deviation of the original uh, distribution of the random variable is, is the standard deviation of this sample, this one sample that we took. So let's use that to approximate this standard deviation. So, so we're going to get this as our best approximation. Now we know that, that there's a chance of generating some error there. So because of that, we will calculate the probability using a t-distribution. A t-distribution looks much like a normal distribution, it ha a standard normal distribution. It has a mean of zero and it has a standard deviation greater than one. We're using that because we want to compensate for the, the chance of introducing some error because we're using this sample, distribu this sample standard deviation instead of the uh, population standard deviation. So we'll convert this x bar to a t value so that it'll be on this the t axis of this uh, t distribution. We'll use uh, the mean of this distribution and this approximating standard deviation for, for uh, this distribution and, uh, and just find that t value. 
Then we'll find the probability of getting that T value or something less than that T value. And uh, if that probability is low, then the null hypothesis must go. Okay, so that's the underlying idea. And, and developing this, uh, de developing um, this little sketch is very, very helpful in completing the rest of the problem. So even though uh, that sketch is seldom actually used, we're going to, to uh, add it in to uh, this discussion. Okay, so the next thing is to uh, identify the, the null hypo... Uh, the, see, stepping through the, the formal steps really has taken place uh, when we uh, sketch this sketch. The uh, random variable that's involved is the emission levels of, of each engine. Um, the mean of the emission levels of each engine is going to come from that null hypothesis. Um, and that's what we're going to be looking for. Step two is to write the hypotheses. Unfortunately, I'm a little disappointed that the uh, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis end up on two different pages here. <coughs> but uh, we know that uh, that the research hypothesis is that uh, the mean is less than, than 20 parts uh, per million. And so that makes the alternative hypothesis equal to 20 parts per million. Now remember, in a minute, we're going to need to find the probability of this event occurring, which was, was what we get from our particular sample. To be able to do that, we need to have this to be a normal distribution so that we can use this t-test to, to calculate that. So we need to worry about this distribution of the sample means being normal. And n is too small. It's, uh, it's less than 30, so now it becomes important for us to examine whether the, distrib whether the original distribution was normal or not. Now let's work our way through some of these assumptions. Uh, notice that uh, the, the, one of the first assumptions needs to be that this sample that we've got really is representative, that maybe it's done as a random sample. It's definitely not. The company manufactured these 10 engines and we're basing everything on those 10. So so we're going to have to, we're making the assumption that that is a representative sample. Um, secondly, we need that distribution of sample means to be normally distributed so we can calculate some probabilities. And so, and and the size of that is too small so let's create the information that we can begin to do some calculations in R. The first thing that we're going to do is build an object called X for the random variable. And there is that original uh, data that we've uh, created a, um, a vector object containing the original data. Then we can easily calculate the mean of that data we'll also be able to find the standard deviation of that data later on. But right now we're really interested in knowing if this data is normally distributed. Of course the QQ plot comes pretty close to being in a straight line, so that's giving us some evidence that that's the case. Now notice here, uh, l let, me, let me show you where all of this is coming from. We're producing this document as we go along by using R Studio. Here I'm using uh, an R Markdown language. There's the command that I'm telling the Markdown language, do an R command here, build this X object. So it actually goes and finds R and, and does those calculations. I'm asking it to find the Q norm. I'm asking it to find the, the histogram of the data of the sample and uh, a box plot so we can look for uh, for outliers. So that little script is actually run and when I hit the knit in R Studio, then it produces this result that we're looking at. So there we are. It's showing us the commands that are given. We did the QQ plot, nearly a straight line. Uh, do a histogram that's down here. 
doesn't look necessarily normally distributed. That's a little bit of a concern. And uh, the box plot, I'm not seeing any outliers. So we don't have any outliers, and uh, the QQ plot is, is pretty much a straight line. So we're going to argue that, yeah, the original population, we believe that it's coming from a, uh, from a straight line. Now, these commands here were put in the markup language so that we can read through them. I'm asking to print the mean so that we can see it. We're calculating the standard deviation and looking at that so we can see it. Now remember the roadmap that we sketched earlier. We've got this X bar. We've had R find that for us. We need to find this T value. We've got the mu, we've got the S, and we've got the N, so we can put all of this information together to get this test statistic. So here we are working in the markdown language. Notice that we're we're printing out what the R, the X bar is, so that we can see it. Uh, what the standard deviation is, just so that we can see it. Now let's create the test statistic. So I'm going to add to this little script. Th this says that. <clears throat> I'm meaning that to be the T hat. And what we're doing there is taking the X bar minus the the mu from uh, from the null hypothesis divided by the estimate of the standard deviation of the population, which is the the S from the sample divided by the square root of of N. Oops, I need to I haven't told at what N is, so I'm going to need to do that. And just so that we can keep following what's happening, let's uh, let's print T hat. And once that's done, let's run, let's knit this document, see what we've got. So there we are with the test statistic. Finally, we need to find the area below that test statistic. Notice that that area always goes the same direction that the null hypothesis is going. So we will use R to do this. Remember when we use the p-norm to find the area to the left of something? Here we're going to use a pt, and so let's do it. Here we are in the markdown language again. So we're going to add to our script uh, the instruction to find the, the p-value, which is going to be pt of the t-hat, and because we're looking at a T distribution, we need to tell it which T distribution. It's a degree of freedom one less than the sample size. So it's, it's uh, 10 minus 1 is what this should be, uh, which is, of course, 9. I could have just written 9 in there. So we find the area to the left of T hat with a degree of freedom equal to 9. And then we'll print out that uh, T value that's... Uh, knit the file which also runs the script and there we are we've got uh, the p-value is going to be this amount and we're ready to look at a conclusion so we're ready to look at the uh, conclusion remember the little rhyme if the p-value is low the null hypothesis must go remember up here is we calculated the p-value we called it p and uh, that is less than, uh, than the alpha level that we had stated originally in the problem. So the null hypothesis must go. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. So since the p-value is less than the alpha value, we reject the null hypothesis. Let's look at, uh, at the interpretation. So we're rejecting the null hypothesis, and that leaves us enough evidence to support the claim that the alternative hypothesis is true, which is saying that the uh, mean emission level of the new engine is less than 200 parts per million. Okay, let's build the engines.